Glory to God. I agreed, everyone, with a piece of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to kindly invite the church to stand up. We do this in reverence to the reading of the Word of the Lord. And tonight we will read on the Old Testament book of the prophet, prophet Isaiah, chapter 38. It's a well-known text of the church. <laughs> Isaiah, chapter 38. The end of the first verse says the following. Thus is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. The church may sit down. May God bless the explanation of his word. The text that we just read, my brethren, it describes a moment very difficult in the life of a man, a king whose name was Ezekiah. And I want to tell the church that living, going through a difficult moment was not a privilege of Ezekiah, because any one of us can live a difficult moment. Can go through a situation that we might say, I didn't ask to go through this. I never imagined that I was going to go through such a difficult situation. Maybe tonight, here somebody is going through this, through a difficult moment. The question is, that Zechariah, as he was going through this difficult moment, he leaves an example that is wonderful for us with he, the way he behaved with the, w with the way that he faced this situation how he withstood that situation and that's what the Lord tonight that's what the Lord wants us to understand when we bring to the member of the church what Ezekiah went through and the Bible says that on those days Ezekiah uh, got sick and being sick is already a difficult situation however the Bible says that he got sick of an illness that was that would lead to death and we all know that when someone is ill, that person becomes upset, sad, and generates inside of the person an anxiety and a hope to get out of this situation or of get, getting rid of this illness and of being cured of no longer going through this difficult moment, that situation is so bad. Ezekiah was in that situation. When then the word says, he was going to receive the visit of the prophet called Isaiah. I'd just like to make a small observation here. Isaiah was a friend of Ezekiah. 
But now, he doesn't go to the house of Hezekiah as a friend, but he goes there as a prophet. And the prophet, as we have learned, is the one that doesn't speak out of himself, but he speaks from the part of the Lord. And God had a message, a word to King Hezekiah. And, and I also dare say to the brother, to the church who is here tonight, that in our moments of difficulty, God always pay attention. God always. We have a word to our hearts. However, Hezekiah thought the prophet, prophet is coming. I am sick. He's coming with a message, a good word from the part of the Lord to bring joy to my heart. However, my, my brand, this is biblical. Our thoughts are not God's time. God's thoughts. Because God's thoughts are more elevated, much more wonderful than ours. The prophet, the prophet goes and brings this word. Thus says the Lord. Did you pay attention? That was the Lord who said, Put your house in order because you will die and will not recover. This was the word. Is, was that the word that the prophet wanted to hear? That the king wanted to hear? Of course not. And when the king heard in a difficult moment that the king was already going through, he could have made uh, take actions, many actions, like for example, open up, open up his mouth, and begin to murmur against God. He could uh, open up his mouth and use a blasphemy against God, and go to a corner and to go and cry. But Hezekiah, Hezekiah doesn't do any of it. Because he was going to leave to us an example of how we are servants of God. We need how we need to behave when we face adversities. And moments that are difficult, moments in which we didn't want to go through. Now, I remember of a, a pastor, uh, a man that looked to me and he told me, Pastor, I would like to have uh, a magical eraser to erase that difficult moment that I'm going through. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it, it goes according to God's economy that we go through s situations like this. You didn't know that? And he then, when he, he, he hears this, he has a different, takes a different action and he turns his face to the wall. Like if someone is saying to you and to me in our difficult moments, instead of opening up our mouth to blasphemy, to say blasphemies or to murmur and to go out in the world desperate because they don't have a like people in the world that don't have an experience with God. He was telling us, turn your face to the wall. Like like if he was saying, it's in difficult situation that the life reserved to us, it is just us and the Lord. And there is no situation, a better situation than this one. Us and God. Us and the Lord. Because no man has compassion, has mercy, but the Lord is the Lord of mercies. He's the one who blesses, 
He's a counselor. He's the one who restores the, the, the God that can do all things and the one that hears us in any moment of the day. Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and does one thing. He has a conversation with God. Because prayer is having a conversation with God. In the difficult moments, we need to do this. Have a conversation with God. Speak with Him. And He then speaks with God. Oh Lord, remember me, I ask you. Uh, remember how I walked in your presence. Do you think, my brother, that you can say this? Going through the moment that you difficult moment that went through or that you may go through can you say that remember Lord how I walked in your presence he said two things in truth and the Bible says that time is coming and the time is now that the true worshipers I'm um, speaking to true worships true worshipers aren't I in the true worshiper. He does this in the moment of adversity. He doesn't forsake God. He doesn't question God. He doesn't s say, God, why? But he turns his face to the wall and he prays and he speaks with God because he walks from truth to truth and with a perfect heart. Is your heart perfect? God looking down from His glory? Is He seeing you with a heart like this? A perfect heart that He has pleasure in your life? And the Word says, He is saying, uh, and the Bible says that He says, and I have done what is good in your eyes. Uh, have you done things that are good in God's eyes? And the Bible says that Hezekiah also did something else. He cried. And moments of diversity may bring us to do the same, to cry, to cry bitterly. And you know how good to cry at God's feet. Sometimes the sister and the brother in the moment of adversity, no one knows, no one is seen, no one has seen you to, uh, seen you crying. In the same way that no one ha had seen Hezekiah crying, Isaiah didn't see it, but the Lord, the Lord saw. In a previous opportunity, I mentioned here in this church that. They have seen many pastors come into the pulpit and they preached and they would cry and then I was telling God, God, I'm not, I'm not get that good. I w want to have this experience of preaching and crying. That year when I prayed like that, I began to cry every time I preached. How good it is to cry, to pour out our tears at God's feet. Are you going through difficult moments? Speak with God. Are you going through a difficult moment? Pour out your tears. Because our God, He sees our tears. And the Word says, Then the Lord, the Word of the Lord came to Isaiah. I'm going to say, I'm going to add here, once again, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. Look what God said. I have heard your prayer. And the moment was, was a moment in a moment of adversity. 
look, my brother, and I see, I, I seen your tears. This is our God. He's the same. And in a moment of difficulties, when you cry, He will see you. You will cry, and He will see your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. Now, bringing this short message to a close, I like to share with the brethren. I was a pastor of a church, and I was at home, and somebody called me. One of my sisters had gone to the hospital and was in very bad shape. And I, and I spoke to an anointed in that church. I told him, put the whole church to pray. 24 hours for her. We prayed for her. And the Lord gave her a great blessing of health. And there we had a supper of the Lord that the Lord had revealed to us in order for us to celebrate the victories of the church, including the victory of the sister. And I said, Lord, what am I going to say to that people, to your people that night? What am I going to say to that church? And the Lord gave me the following word. Tell this to my, my servant. Uh, I have been in great bitterness, but you so lovingly embraced my soul. That's the blessing. That was our blessing, yours, that of that sister. In your, in your moment of difficulty, you, the Lord will embrace you lovingly. So the advice that I give you, let the Lord embrace you. Lord, embrace me. This moment of difficulty in my life, this situation I'm going through, Lord, embrace me lovingly. I only have you, Lord. You are my God. You are my Lord. You are my victory. Embrace me, Lord. How good. Many times the embrace of a brother, isn't it true? Oh, oh embrace of my granddaughter. Oh, what a wonderful embrace. How good. The embrace of the Lord. Lovingly, the word says. Lovingly, you embraced my soul. Because God is like that. God is love. Amen.
Glory to God. Our service has come to its end. I'd like to pray for the church. If you, if you desire, you may kneel down. I'd like to invite uh, Dick and Wayne to be here at the front, and we're going to pray for your life. And this is the moment for you to speak with God. Close your eyes. The Lord knows what is in your heart, what is your living or going through. Let us pray. Beloved Father, your people is placing before you in prayer. Who are we, Lord? We are poor. In fact, we are needy. But we have this great blessing. The Lord, you take care of us. That's why, Lord, Lay your good hands of power, power and grace, and of mercy upon the life of your church, and renew the faith, the joy of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of the Lord, and in the authority of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we reproach now any difficulty. Bring joy to the heart of your people. Bless each home here represented and give victory. Victories and victories to your people. For the glory of your name that is be above all names. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May the grace, the wonderful grace of, your, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be resting upon us now and until the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. Since we pray for the whole church, if there is any special need, we are here at your disposal. Tomorrow, our Sunday school is at 10.30 in the morning. And everyone is invited. A piece of, a piece of the Lord.